I'd like to welcome everybody aboard. We'll get started right now with news you can use. Uh, I, I was going to talk about some general economic things, but other news headlines have bumped that. Uh, and, and today, primarily, everybody's talking about the death of Queen Elizabeth, one of the longest, or if not the longest reigning monarch uh, that uh, for, for a long time, centuries or something. But um, hidden in uh, underneath the, uh, the notices uh, regarding Queen Elizabeth's death is the fact that interest rates hit a new high today, 6.25% interest rates, uh, the average interest rate for homeowners. So we're going to talk about the effect of that and how that is affecting the market. Uh, and I'm going to read you some of the headlines that came out this morning. And finally, these guys are getting the memo that this market has changed. Uh, that things are happening differently, et cetera. So this morning, six hours ago, Yahoo News, as housing market cools, home buyers regain leverage. Three hours ago, Los Angeles Times, a cooling housing market gives home buyers more leverage. The Portland Press, one hour ago, as housing market cools, home buyers regain leverage. The USA News, six hours ago, housing market cools, home buyers are regaining leverage. And SF Gate, six hours ago, these guys copied each other's housing market cools, home buyers regain leverage. And the same thing goes on and on. Additionally, the news cycles, the news channels picked up on the fact that interest rates have hit a new high. Uh, CBS News a few hours ago came out with this statement. Mortgage rates hit 5.8% interest highest level since 2008 housing crash. It actually has gone from 5.8 to 6.25 uh, just since that happened. So uh, right now we are sitting in the largest rate of interest, the highest rate of interest that we've seen since at least the 2008 uh, housing crash. That's not a good sign. Um, Forbes magazine, six hours ago, mortgage rates hit highest level since 2008 in latest bleak sign for housing. And finally, the Gainesville Times, when interest rates, with interest rate rising, a couple of experts weigh in on how they view the impending housing market crash. So that brings up something interesting. Are we in a housing market crash? Is, are, is housing stock likely uh, you know, to be able to, uh, to do something? Uh, like crash or have some really adverse effects like we saw in 2008, 2009, 10, 11, and 12. In fact, um, during that period of time from 2006, which was the peak of the housing market prices to 2012, which was the trough at the bottom, the average price of all homes in the U.S. dropped 27%. That's a huge amount, 27% from their peak to their trough. Uh, and that was clearly a housing crash. And technically, a housing crash is 10% or more. So if a market goes from, and remember, this took six or seven years to get this done, uh, to drop 27%. Uh, housing market crash, 10% uh, is considered a crash. Uh, we're not there yet, but it's for a number of different reasons. We were very careful with our lending this time. They required the buyers, instead of having nothing down, um, 2 3%, have 20% down. There's very few little teaser rate mortgages, adjustable rate mortgages out there right now, although they're coming back because of the high interest rates. Uh, most mortgages written over the last four, five, six years have been fixed rate 30-year mortgages at a decent rate of interest. Six and a quarter is not. It has really crimped the ability of uh, folks to, to be able to buy houses, um, affordability. And we're gonna talk about that coming up in a second. But you know, overall, we weren't writing shitbag mortgages as they called them back that they did in 2008, nine, um, or 2006, five, six, seven, and eight that led to the crash of eight and nine. So uh, the mortgage quality is a lot better. Uh, generally or arguably the economy is better uh, but most cases in history over the last hundred years, when the housing stock crashes, when the housing prices drop, it takes the whole economy down with it. So, you know, the government in theory is very careful and very cautious about uh, not letting that happen this time, but they can only do so much, right? 
Uh, interest rates alone uh, aren't going to cause a complete crash, but they're going to add fuel to the fire that if some other thing happens, uh, it could adversely affect the, the housing stock completely. Now, currently, as of today, New Zealand has, a, has lost 21% of the value of their housing stock. That's just since early this year. That is a, that's a full-blown crash. The economy there is in a free fall. Same thing with Australia, 18%, and Canada, 13%. Now, keep in mind, it took seven years to drop 27%. Uh, even though the crash happened in eight and nine, it took that long for it to really roll itself out. And we're seeing in these other countries these huge drops in months, eight months, six months, in some cases, three or four months type thing. So here in the U.S., are we in a housing crash? I can't get good numbers. I cannot get a legit answer to that. I don't know if it's above 10%, below 10%. I actually read something an hour ago that said our housing prices have actually gone up 1.8%. I saw another one that says we're already 12% down. So I don't know, but there is some uh, chart information here that I'm going to have actually put up that we're going to look at. And it's, you know, the bases upon which a lot of these prognostications are made. I want to show these to you guys so you can see and, you know, come up with your own opinion. Let's take a look at these. Uh, this first one is household mortgage debt service. Um, this, this indicates of your total mortgage or your total income that you've got, how much is going towards a mortgage. And so we've been very considerably uh, more conservative, uh, from 2002 to 2022, you can see they were paying up to total of 6%. Now keep in mind, half the houses in the U S are paid for free and clear. So that's artificially keeping these numbers low, but you know, we have driven that number down into here, into 22, and it's still at a relatively low rate, 4% of income. Let's take a look at the next one. Interest rates, 30-year mortgage rates. This is the this is the big problem right now. You can see that currently, and this this was as of earlier today when we were at 5.89%. We're over the 6% mark right now. Uh, you can see what's happened here. Just in the last year, this dramatic increase, actually it's since the beginning of this year, this dramatic increase in interest rates is now at an all-time high from, it goes back, this chart only goes to 16, but it, as we mentioned earlier, it's higher than it's ever been since 2008. Uh, that's a problem. So, you know, that would indicate that will really clog up the housing market. So we'll see what that does. Now let's take a look at the next one. All right, um, the affordability index is the ability to get yourself, in my opinion, the ability to get yourself out of a downward slide or crash. Um, you can see it has dropped precipitously from, and I'm not sure how they come up with their numbers. It was 190 about a year ago, uh, and it's down around 90 today. And I don't know exactly what that means, but sorry, I got this stuff late. But the, the main takeaway on this thing is you can see where affordability uh, had actually gone up slightly since probably 16, 17, had upward trend. And here about a year ago, it has started to really drop off. And that has, that drop has gone up exponentially in the last uh, three or four months. Uh, so affordability is tanking. It's very, very hard to have an affordable housing situation today. And let's look at the final one here. Uh, and this is one of the arguments that I think will keep us from having a housing crash. This is probably the most important slide you're going to see here this afternoon. Household debt service ratio. Consumers across the board are have been getting out of debt. They have been paying off debt, um, and they have uh, they are frankly spending less. They're being more fiscally responsible. Uh, as a whole, the United States, all of us, are spending less money, less of our disposable income on debt than heading into financial crisis. So in other words, we're not running up big credit card bills. We're not running up new car. Some of that's because you can't get a new car. Uh, new car loans, we're not, you know, we can't buy houses in a lot of cases because these people can't afford it. 
So we're deleveraging as a society. To me, this is probably the number one thing that may keep us, and that, that's all we want to show here, uh, actually, go back to main screen. That, I believe, is probably the main reason that we might avoid a crash this go round. You know, we may have a drop close to 10% overall. Uh, it, it is not necessarily a sure thing. It could, you know, slip off and fall uh, very quickly. But I think overall, we're in a lot better position. Now, if the Fed, you can go ahead and clear that screen, Ash. Um, the, the, if the Fed continues to raise interest rates and doesn't stop, um, you know, it will essentially clobber the market completely. But I believe, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, that the Fed will come to their senses sometimes next year. And there's some talk that, you know, that information has been shared already uh, with Fannie or Freddie. And, you know, there is a possibility that they will stop dropping, they will start dropping interest rates next year rather than three, four, five years down the road, which is typically what will happen. So you're seeing this whole thing, like I said, back here in 2006, it took seven years to go from the top to the bottom. I think we're already seeing it. It's going to happen much faster. And if the Fed cooperates and drops interest rates next year, we could see the market actually start to go back up. It'll be probably one of the quickest cycles. It will be the quickest cycle we've ever seen. But everything's on hyper vigilance right now regarding the economy and um, the, the ability of these folks to manipulate this thing. So we'll talk about that uh, more when we get back into the big broad topic of the economy, how it's being manipulated, that type of thing. But right now, what I'm seeing is with the exception of the interest rate going up and up and up, uh, we're in not too bad a shape in the housing market. Uh, fortunately, the sellers are getting spooked. So there's more sellers there now and they tend to overreact. We saw this on some uh, on one of my housing team calls today where you know, the three or four people that had a similar model all got panicked and they all dropped their prices fighting each other to the bottom. And so we picked up a couple of houses at really good prices that weren't even affordable uh, using our model a week ago. But you know, the sellers woke up and are like, okay, this is a housing market now that belongs to buyers. It's not a seller's market anymore. And we better get something while the getting's good. Well, at least we can get something. And so what that'll do is it will create temporary dips in the market that will allow you to buy on the shorts, sell on the highs. Uh, this thing is going to have high cycle frequencies, in my opinion. Uh, and if you stay really attuned to the market, if you're in a specific market, uh, great. But you can apply this to the overall general market. We see it where we're doing national advertising. We see it where we're doing local as well. So keep your eyes and ears open. We'll keep you guys attuned to everything that's going on, but uh, thought I'd pass on that news today, what interest rates are doing and, and how the mainstream media is finally waking up to what's really going on out there. All right, that's it for news you can use for today.